buying in bulk can either be something that saves you a whole bunch of money or becomes one of your biggest financial mistakes ever. And today we're going to talk about how to watch out for some of those things. Hello everybody, if you're new here, my name is Lisa and welcome to Sutton's Days. We are all about pantry preparedness and today we're talking about buying in bulk. You can see I do a lot of bulk buying, a lot of storage buying, um, so that I have what I need when I need it and I don't have to make a lot of trips to the store. That's just one of the many benefits. Cost savings is always right there at the top. When you purchase things in bulk, you can look for the lower cost. Now, it's not guaranteed all the time, and that's something that we'll discuss more towards the end of this video, but you can find cost savings by purchasing larger quantity of non-perishable items like rice or beans or paper towels or that kind of thing than you can by buying the one-off, the one pound or the one roll or whatever. It. So being able to reduce your cost for the same amount of food by just purchasing more at once can save you money so that further down the road you can take that savings and put it towards other bulk purchases so that eventually you are literally going to the store for just a couple of things every other week. Extended storage is a big part of this. So buying in bulk provides a larger quantity of non-perishable items allowing prepared people like us, right, um, to extend our storage capacity. So items like rice, beans, pasta, canned goods, uh, when bought in bulk can contribute to a well-stocked pantry that can sustain a household for an extended period of time. And that's what we're looking for here. Okay. If something were to happen and we couldn't leave the house, we have what we need here. We really, really do. Um, maybe not what we want, but what we need. So you may not have that fresh salad, but you've got, you've got seeds to sprout or you've got lettuce to grow in a pot. You know, you've got fruits and vegetables in the cans and the jars and the proteins on the shelves. You have what you need to sustain yourself. And that is super important. And it's one of the benefits of buying in bulk. With that comes the reduced dependency on external supplies. So I don't know about you, but I aim to be as self-sufficient as I can in a time of crisis. In a time of crisis, the last thing that you want to have to worry about is, can I get this? Can I get that? Where do I have to go for this? Where do I have to go for that? Do I have the ability to do any of that? And so in, in a crisis, it's super important to be able to have the items that you know you're going to use in your pantry. If you buy in bulk, a well-stocked pantry can withstand disruptions in supply chains or emergencies that may limit access to stores. That can be anything from from weather-related, you know, incidents to health-related incidents um, or, you know, whatever the world tosses at us this week. Having the ability to get to the stores may not always be there. So having the things that we can stored up is a great thing to do. As a uh, pantry preparedness person, say that five times real fast, we can have a surplus of the essential items and can be better prepared for a variety of scenarios, okay, literally, um, including natural disasters, economic downturns, or other emergencies. So it gives us that long-term planning ability in order to cover ourselves, that insurance policy that I'm always talking about, right? Buying in bulk provides us the ability to do that long-term planning for any future things that arise customizable inventory. <laughs> okay. So the stores may not always have everything that you want or need. And over time, as you build your pantry, if you can buy in bulk, you can give yourself that customizable inventory. You can stock up on things um, that are specific to your needs and your preferences. And you're not reliant on an X, uh, you're not reliant on an external source um, having to come up with the one-off for you because you have the bulk purchases that you've put up that you know will last you for, you know, an extended an extended period of time. Um, and that makes it so much easier. It's like one more off your shoulders. I know a lot of people talk about, well, wait, I could stock this up for bartering. I don't believe in stocking up for the purpose of bartering. I believe in stocking up what we use 
for ourselves. However, in the case of a scenario where bartering or some kind of community support may be needed, um, having that bulk store in your home, in your pantry, allows you to do things like barter or allows you to do things like help your community in case of an emergency. Um, it is not the reason to buy something. Only, only stock things up that you know you're going to use, that you and your family actually actually consume. Um, buying things that you don't consume strictly for the purpose of bartering is wasting money. And you'd be better served to light the dollar bills on fire to try to keep warm. So only stock the things that you definitely know that you're going to use. If you don't eat oatmeal, don't buy 40 pounds of oatmeal. It's not going to serve you well at all. Well, I'll be able to barter it. R really? Okay. That's no reason to store it. That's no reason to put that money, that time, that effort into it for the purpose of giving it away at some potential, maybe future date. If you eat oatmeal, buy 40 pounds of it if you want. Okay. Okay. Store it up the way that you should. Make sure that it's all sealed and contained and nothing can get to it. And then if something arises, you have that stockpile in order to help people out or to be able to sustain yourself on it for a little while. Something to consider. And it's it's it. this is kind of where it draws that line, right? While buying in bulk can be beneficial to for preppers, it's crucial to consider factors like shelf storage, storage conditions, rotation of supplies. Remember, it's not here to look at. It's here to use, okay? Um, additionally, diversifying your pantry with a mix of food, water, medical supplies, and other essential uh, is comprehensive preparedness. And you want to build to the point where you have comprehensive preparedness. You want to make sure that you have what you need for you and yours in case of difficult times, hard times, emergencies. When can buying in bulk save you money? So it can give you a lower per unit cost. And my perfect example for this is uh, pinto beans. We're going to go with pinto beans. So I went to a variety of different places and I looked at prices for what they charge for pinto beans. And I'm going to give you little screenshots here so that you can see what I saw. Prices may vary. <clears throat> Prices may vary. This is what's being shown to me from my area. So if you have Azure, um, Azure standard available to you where you can go pick it up, okay? <clears throat> Azure does, they're, they're great for bulk purchases. They really are. But a five pound bag a five pound bag of pinto beans is $6.97. That comes up to $1.39 a pound. Okay, you know, it, it could be worse, right? Uh, most people know if you go to Dollar Tree, you can get them for, what, $1.25 a pound now, okay? Um, if you go to webrestaurant.com, which they have a lot of really great stuff, the, sh the shipping will kick your butt, but... Um, the, they do have a lot of great stuff. I mean, it's, it's geared more towards, you know, restaurant, that kind of thing, but it's great for bulk purchases, but they have a 20 pound container of dried pinto beans and that's twenty five ninety nine. That's, that's more than, that's more than Azure. And that price comes up to, I can't read it. So anyway, it's more than a dollar a pound. How's that? Um, so not such a great deal, right? Now, if we go to Walmart and I just picked Walmart because pretty much everybody has access to a Walmart. I did three different kinds here, three different sizes. They have a four pound bag of pinto beans and that is $3 and 76 cents a pound. Okay. A that's under a dollar a pound, right? It comes up to 5.9 cents per ounce. Then they have a larger bag. For some reason, I want to say it's eight pounds, um, and that is for six eighty-eight. So again, it's under a dollar a pound. It comes up to five point four cents. So you went from five point nine cents per ounce to five point four cents per ounce by buying the larger bag if you can afford it. Three seventy-six to six eighty-eight. Now, this is where it gets really fun. If you buy a twenty-pound bag, okay, so that is five of the four-pound bags but you're only paying $14.94 for a 20 pound bag. And that drops down to 4.7 cents per ounce. 
that's a lot of savings over time for something that you eat if you eat pinto beans. And this is just my example of how the price migrates down the larger that the container is, the, the larger that the purchase is. This is not always the case. And so it's something that you really need to dig into and investigate. When you're looking at bulk purchases, bigger may not always be better. And being able to break down that per pound, per ounce, whatever the case may be, cost uh, between the larger container and the smaller container is a great way to see exactly where your money is going and whether or not it's worth it. I've talked about my shroom dealer for years now. He's a vendor at the farmer's market where I get cases, 10 pound cases of mushrooms. I don't get a great savings off of this. Um, if I were to make the drive, which is pretty extensive, and go to something like Aldi, I mean, that's an hour and 15 minutes away from me. And when they have mushrooms on sale, I could buy those eight ounce packages. I could buy cases of those eight ounce packages, right? And probably save a couple of bucks. But then I have all of that excess packaging and I don't want to deal with it. Sometimes the matter of the cost could be a matter of convenience and not wanting all of the extra garbage that comes with it. And so you have to factor that into the play also. Which comes to my next point, which is reduced packaging costs. So sometimes you can buy in bulk because they don't have to put as much packaging out there. Buying in bulk often means less individual packaging, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm kind of over the whole Aldi and how they prepackage every possible thing that they can. Um, so if you can buy it in bulk, then theoretically, not always, but theoretically, you can significantly reduce overall costs because the manufacturer, the producer, is not having to shell out all that extra money for the extra packaging. The next one is just basic economies of scale. I mean, it comes back to, you know, economics 101. Suppliers can take advantage of economies of scale when producing goods in larger quantities. They, it just costs them less to do larger quantities than it does to do smaller quantities. So often you will find better deals in the larger quantities. Next one, especially in today's world, right, is lower transportation costs. So if they don't have to spend as much money transporting, now you remember, it's not just, it's the transportation of the goods to them. It's the transportation of the goods away from them. It's the transportation of the package materials. You know, it's, there's a lot of transportation going on to produce, let's say, one little eight ounce container of saran wrapped mushrooms in a plastic container, right? So if, if they don't have to spend all that extra money, then theoretically, if you shop around, you can find a better deal by buying in bulk. Time and efforts. Time and effort savings. Yeah. Buying in bulk can save you time and effort since you don't need to make frequent trips to the grocery store. You know me, I value my time at a very high dollar amount. And so to me, buying in bulk keeps me from having to be repetitive with this process frequently. I would rather go to the store once a year and buy 200 pounds of chicken than I would go to the store every other week and buy 10 pounds of chicken. It just, I, I want it done. I want it over with so that I can take that time and the dollar amount that I associate with that time and use it on something else. And so by being, <clears throat> pardon me, by being able to do that, I have the ability to save money and actually get more done. If you have a wholesale place near you, and again, this is not always the case because if, if you don't have a business account or something like that, then real wholesale places may not sell to you. But there are some wholesale places out there that are open to the public where you can get a better deal. Uh, we, have, we have a restaurant supply thing called, here called Gordon Foods. They're 45 minutes from us. So again, it's not really, you know, once I factor in the gas to drive there, I have to figure out the savings. And when I get there, there are some things that I can save money on. Uh, if I'm doing a large, large batch of salsa off season where I don't have tomatoes, then I know I can buy those number 10 cans of tomatoes at a much cheaper price than I could the 11 ounce cans or the 15 ounce cans that I get at the grocery store. So if you're looking at something like that, then that's great. Buying in bulk, buying a, a, restaurant sized container of mayonnaise, unless you use a whole bunch of mayonnaise is not worth it. Yes, 
technically you're saving money, but there's no way to repackage that or extend its shelf life. And so that's one of the ways that you can make a mistake in buying in bulk is if it's something that you are not going to use fast enough, if it's something that you have to repackage um, that is not like a dry good, okay? So purchasing canned tomatoes with the thought that you're going to repackage them and recan them, you can't do that safely because there's no way to tell what the acidity in there is. And so it, there's not a safe measure. There's no safe way to buy a restaurant sized can of mustard and repackage it to make it shelf stable because there's no way to know exactly what's in there and whether or not it's safe to do so. But if you're looking at dried goods, if you're looking at paper goods, if you're looking at shampoos, conditioners, hygiene, that kind of stuff, these are things where you can quantify the amount that you have, figure out how much it costs down from, say, a one-off purchase, and you can see how you're going to save money, but nothing will go bad if you don't use it right away. So being very particular about what you buy in bulk will save you a lot of money and keep you from making mistakes. I see a lot of people that go out and say, I got a really great deal on a restaurant sized can of pickle relish. What do I do with it now? Put it in your fridge. That's going to take up a lot of room. So you haven't really saved any money unless you go through a whole lot of pickle relish. You know what I mean? You have to take a you have to step back from a great deal and say, will this really be a great deal by the time I'm done with it? That is an important step to buying in bulk. Knowing how to extend the shelf life of your dry goods. So if you're if you're like me and you like buying spices in bulk, um be knowing that I have to take those spices put them into the canisters that I have in my kitchen that I use all the time, but take anything left over and either vacuum seal it into jars or put it into mylar and vacuum seal it. You know, there are steps beyond so that it can, you can extend its life. There are those things to consider also as to whether or not it's truly a great deal, but sometimes it's just a really good deal and you don't want to pass it up. And so the best way to do that is to buy in bulk figure out how to put it up, make it happen, and it's one less thing that you have to think about moving forward. It's essential to note uh, that the extent of savings may vary depending on the type of product, supplier policies, right? The specific terms of the bulk purchase. Additionally, buying in bulk may not always be cost effective for perishable items or products with a limited shelf life as there's a risk of waste and we waste more than enough, don't we? Uh, so if they can't be used before the expiration date, then you're wasting money and there's, there's better things to waste money on. If you want to see how using oxygen absorbers and the kind of things that are great for oxygen absorbers, check out this video right here. And until next time, everybody be safe.